This is Chemistry Podcast 1.2. We're going to talk about classification of matter. Um, what's the difference between elements, compounds, and mixtures? We need to know that all matter can be classified as a pure substance or a mixture. And you're going to see in just a second, you don't need to try and copy this down yet, but there's a flow chart we can look at that shows us how matter can be classified as either a mixture down here or a pure substance. Um, definitions that you would need to know is that a pure substance is matter that has a specific chemical composition that doesn't ever change. Um, basically, it has a chemical formula. So if we think of salt, salt is considered a pure substance because its composition never changes and it has a chemical formula of NaCl. Water would be another one. Water's composition never changes, it's always two hydrogens with one oxygen. So a chemical formula makes something a pure substance. Mixtures are things that have variable compositions. So I could have salt water, and because the composition um, can change, I can have different ratios of salt to water. That makes it a mixture. There's no chemical formula for mixtures. Um, I would pause right here and copy this down. This flowchart explains that matter, if it has a variable composition, is a mixture, not variable, is a pure substance. And it breaks it down for you. We're going to look at each of these parts of the flowchart individually. We'll do examples of each. So on this side, we're going to start with the mixtures. Matter with the variable composition is considered a mixture. And there are two types of mixtures. There's homogeneous and heterogeneous. Homogeneous solutions or mixtures are the same throughout. There's only one phase. So no matter where you take a sample of a homogeneous mixture, it's going to be the same. That doesn't mean that it has a chemical formula because it doesn't. It's still a mixture, but it just looks the same throughout. Uh, some examples that we could write down would be salt water is an example of a homogeneous solution. There's also, you could say, rubbing alcohol. That's a mixture of isopropyl alcohol and water. Um, let's think. Actually, flat soda pop, or we'll just say flat soda. You couldn't have fizzy soda because the bubbles are a gas and then the liquid would be the soda. And that's two different phases. Homogeneous, you can only have one phase. If you have flat soda, all the bubbles have gone, so that is considered a homogeneous solution. And maybe another one would be apple juice. All of these things look the same. There's one phase. If I take a sample from anywhere, it looks the same. Um, heterogeneous mixtures are not the same throughout. You can see different phases, so that means that there is more than one phase. Examples of heterogeneous mixtures, so you can look at it and you can see basically the different parts of it. If you think granite rock, granite is an example of heterogeneous. You can see all the different colors. It looks um, kind of put together. You can see oil and vinegar. If you have a mixture of oil and vinegar, you know that it settles out. You can see the individual parts. Pizza is one. And then to go along with this side, if flat soda pop is a homogeneous solution, then we'll call it fizzy pop over here. The bubbles being one phase and then the pop being the second liquid phase. So heterogeneous mixtures are the same throughout. There's more than one phase that you can see. Homogeneous, they are the same throughout and there's only one phase. The way that we can separate mixtures into the different parts that make it up, there are three different ways. These are called physical methods. The first one is through filtration. 
Filtration would be if you have um, maybe like sand and water. You have a mixture that has a solid in it that you're trying to get out. What you would do is you would set up a funnel, and that's what this is right here, and it would have funnel paper in it. You guys, I'm sure, have all done this. You take your mixture that has the solid in here. So we'll draw our little solid particles so we can see them. You're going to pour it down a glass rod. The reason you do this is it just makes it a more clean pour. It doesn't run down the beaker like this. So the glass rod just helps you get it right into the funnel. The solid or the residue stays in the funnel and then the liquid, which we call the filtrate once it comes out, is what you get. So if it were a sand and water mixture, the sand would stay inside the filter paper and be caught and the water would run through and we would capture it in the beaker at the bottom. Another example of a way that we can separate mixtures is through chromatography. Chromatography is something that I'm sure you've done a number of times. You take chromatography paper, which is what this is, or you can use a paper towel or a coffee filter, and you put it in some sort of liquid. Usually if it's a permanent marker, you want to use rubbing alcohol. If you use water, the water won't attract the marker and drag it up the paper with it. So if you use rubbing alcohol, that will grab the black ink and it will separate it out into the individual colors that make it up. So here you can see that the black ink written, they wrote a dot right there. You place it in the liquid and they call this the mobile phase travels up the paper and as it goes it separates the black ink into all the different colors that make it up. The third way that you can separate mixtures is through distillation. Distillation is a way that you use different boiling points of things. So here let's say that this is salt water. Let's write that on here. Let's say that this is salt water. If I have salt water in this flask, what happens is we heat it up and the salt doesn't evaporate or become a vapor, it's just the water. So as we do this, we evaporate the water, it vaporizes, it travels down this tube. We're running cool water in here, so it causes it to condense and then it drops back in as pure water down here into this flask. The other side of that flow chart that we were looking at were the pure substances. So we can go from mixtures to pure substances through those physical methods that we just talked about, the three ways, the filtration, distillation, and the chromatography. But let's focus on what a pure substance is. So we already said that it has a specific chemical composition. It doesn't change. And there are two types of pure substances, just like there were two types of mixtures. There are elements and compounds. Elements have only one type of atom. So it's the simplest form of a pure substance. You can find it on the periodic table. It has just one type. You could have hydrogen gas. Um, hydrogen gas, when it's all by itself, is H2. You have two molecules of hydrogen stuck together. That is still an element because it's the one type of atom. It's two hydrogens, but it's still only one type. Compounds are various types of atoms chemically bonded. So water would be a compound. Salt would be a compound. When you involve more than one type of an atom, that's when you get a compound. And then if we look at elements, we can break elements down into individual atoms. Atoms have a nucleus and electrons, and then we can go down from there all the way to quarks. But we're not going to worry about that right now. You just need to make sure that you can go from pure substances to elements or pure substances to compounds and you know the difference. The only way you can travel between an element as a compound is through chemical methods and a chemical method is just a way of saying a chemical reaction. So we can take water and through electrolysis which means we run an electrical current through it we can end up with hydrogen and oxygen gas. So that is definitely a chemical reaction that took place, and that's how we went from a compound into the elements. That's the end of podcast 1.2. Make sure that you have that flowchart copied down and some examples of homogeneous, heterogeneous mixtures, elements, and compounds.